The purpose of using proper body mechanics is simple, to prevent injury. One of the most strenuous and potentially hazardous parts of our job is bending, stretching, and reaching. Did you notice how I said potential? Sure, there are potential hazards, but that doesn't mean they have to automatically result in injuries. Just the opposite. If you follow the procedures outlined in this video, the potential for injury can be greatly minimized or eliminated. That's the goal. But so you can better understand, let's look first at a few definitions. Musculoskeletal Disorders, MSD. According to the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, musculoskeletal disorders are injuries or disorders to the soft tissues in the body. How are MSDs caused? Many MSDs are associated with work tasks that involve force, heavy lifting, maintaining control of equipment or tools, frequency and repetition, performing the same motions, awkward posture, reaching, kneeling, squatting, twisting. Ergonomics is defined as the science of fitting workplace conditions and job demands to the capabilities of the working population. Body mechanics is how one lifts, pushes, pulls, or carries objects. So now that we've covered the definitions, let's take a look at basic principles that show you how you can stay healthy and pain-free. Remain close to the object. Use the largest and strongest muscles. Widen your base of support. Avoid twisting. Maintain your center of gravity. Push, roll, or slide. Utilize tools and assistive devices whenever possible. Besides using proper body mechanics, whenever possible you always want to opt for using any tools or assistive devices that are available to prevent potential injuries to you and your client. The less stress on the body, the better, right? Of course, that's why it's important for you to understand what assistive devices are available to use and of course how to safely use them before starting care. The good news is that there are several assistive tools and devices that are easy to use and make your job safer. Non-slip shoes have proven to reduce the chance of slipping and falling and obtaining a musculoskeletal disorder or other injury. Soles are made of durable rubber and they feature traction support to reduce chances of slipping. There are a variety of designs and material and they are offered at many department stores. A gate belt fits around the client's waist and provides a firm grasping surface enabling the caregiver to assist with transferring a client who is partially dependent but is able to bear weight. The belt should be tightened to where you can fit two of your fingers between the belt and the client. Ensure that a layer of clothing is between the client and the belt to reduce the chance of abrasion. When transferring a client, they should be close to your body. Gate belts should not be used on clients who cannot bear their own weight, feel lightheaded or confused, have a skin disorder or rash in the trunk area, have or have recently had a fractured rib, recent surgery, severe heart or respiratory disease. Gate belts may not be suitable for ambulation with heavier clients or uncooperative clients. A hospital bed enables the caregiver to make adjustments with very little physical exertion by using electrical or crank adjustments on the bed. The bed can be lowered for clients who are at risk of falling and allows caregivers to care for the client with very little to no bending and makes it much more easier to reposition the client. Bed rails help prevent the client from falling out of bed. Bath boards fit along the sides or around the tub. They are used for clients who are partially weight-bearing with good sitting pallets. It enables the caregiver to easily transfer the client in and out of the bath, bathe the client easily and safely, and reduce the chance of client slip or fall. Grab bars are usually found in the bathroom and help the client maintain their balance when getting up or sitting down. Grab bars can also reduce fatigue from standing. The trapeze bar is normally suspended from an overhead frame and enables the client to raise and reposition themselves in bed. The trapeze bar enables the caregiver to transfer the client more easily and assist the client with repositioning. A toilet seat riser decreases the distance to the toilet, reduces the amount of physical exertion and enables the caregiver to easily transfer the client and assist with toileting. Horror lifts are used to lift and transfer a client. 
There are electronic crank and pump type lifts. The Hoyer lift enables the caregiver to safely and easily lift and transfer the client. It also reduces both the number of lifts and the overall amount of physical exertion. After you have become familiar with any necessary tools, devices, and you have a good understanding of how to use them, it's important to remember to assess the environment in which you will be providing care, as well as the client to ensure they are feeling well, comfortable, and ready for the services that you are going to be providing. The proper assessment and plan for a transfer, ambulation, or lift can make the difference between a safe transfer and an injury for you or your client. Plan ahead to ensure safety. Is the home cluttered? Walkways obstructed? Is there enough light? Is there enough room to lift and transfer? Do you have the tools you need? Are there any animals in the home? Slip hazards, for example, loose rugs? Uneven or broken surfaces? If any hazards or obstacles exist, correct or remove them before attempting the transfer. Review the client's plan of care. Observe the size and weight of the client and any medical conditions. Identify any assistive devices the client is using or may need. First, prepare the client. Ask the client if he or she is ready to be moved. If transferring or lifting from a bed, lower the client's legs over the edge of the bed while helping him or her sit up. Make sure the gate belt is fastened securely. Ensure that a layer of clothing is between the client and the belt to avoid abrasion. Second, prepare your body. Position your feet shoulder width apart, one slightly forward for wide base support. Maintain a firm, natural footing. Get as close to the client as possible. Keep your back straight, let your legs do the work. Third, transfer the client. Stabilize the client's legs. Squat or bend knees. Divide weight between your two hands for balance. Have the client place their hands on your shoulders. Don't allow them to clasp their hands behind your neck. Keep them close to your body and do not use the belt to lift the client up. Use a rocking motion to help the client build up momentum to get to a standing position. Pivot with your feet. Do not twist at the trunk. Allow the client to rest for a few moments to make sure they have recovered from any dizziness. Keep in mind that the client should be able to bear some weight in the legs and or arms and or a part of the weight is supported by an assistive device. When ambulating with a walker, stay behind the client, yet off to the side. Walk on the client's weaker side. Walk in the same pattern and pace as the client. When ambulating with a gait belt, keep one hand on the gait belt at all times and the other either lightly on the client's back or holding onto the belt at the side. If a client starts to fall during ambulation, slide your arms under the client's arm. Pull the client against your body. This should prevent the fall. If they continue to fall, guide the client to the floor with one foot in front of the other, using the large muscles of your legs. To reposition a client in bed, first communicate with the client so they are aware of what you're about to do. If possible, elevate the bed to minimize bending. Whichever direction you roll the client, place that arm across the chest. If you are going to the right, the right arm will go across the chest. Bend the client's opposite knee. Roll the client over by putting your closest hand on their knee and the other under the client's shoulder. To sit the client up in bed, first communicate with them so they are aware of what you are about to do. Using the draw sheet, pull the client toward the head of the bed. If the client can assist, have them do so by pushing with their legs. If a family member can help, it makes the job much easier. When utilizing a Hoyer lift, again, communicate with the client. If possible, raise the bed to minimize bending. Place a sling at the edge of the bed. The lift should be nearby and its route clear of obstruction. 
Roll the client away from you and on their side. Push the sling directly behind the client's back. Then roll the client back towards you and on their side and flatten out the sling from the other side. Roll the client again so they are resting on their back and on top of the sling. Next, roll the bottom portion of the Hoyer as far under the bed as possible. The attachment bar should be directly above the client. If needed, lower the attachment bar so you are able to connect the sling. Connect the Hoyer chains or straps to the sling. Make sure that the longer chains or straps are at the bottom of the sling and the shorter chains or straps are at the top of the sling. Use the lever provided to slowly raise the client to a sitting position. Slowly raise the client until their buttocks is just above the bed. Slowly turn the client so their legs are facing the edge of the bed. Using the Hoyer steering handles, move the lift away from the bed. Move the client over the wheelchair. Make sure the wheels are locked on the chair and the lift. Pull the release tab on the Hoyer lift so the client is lowered slowly into the wheelchair. Before removing the sling from the lift, ensure that the client is stable. The client should never be left sitting in the Hoyer lift unattended. Remove the Hoyer sling if the client is going to be sitting for a long period of time. Don't leave it in the wheelchair. Never attempt to use equipment that is not functioning properly and report concerns immediately to the care center for assistance. Do not attempt to use a Hoyer lift if you do not feel comfortable using it or you do not recall how to use it. Immediately report to the care center so that training can be done. If a client falls, stay calm, don't panic. Ask the client if they are okay. Ask the client if he or she can try to get up. If the client cannot get up, call 911 for assistance. Never attempt to lift the client off the ground if they cannot assist. Never leave your client before assistance arrives. If the client is able to get up, tell them to roll to their side slowly and crawl or position themselves in front of a piece of furniture that is stable to support them. Facing the front of the furniture, have them slowly begin to rise while bending whichever knee is stronger, while keeping the other knee on the floor. Slowly turn around and sit. Sit for a few minutes after the fall to recover. If the client is injured and if medical treatment is needed, call 911. Always contact the care center to report any and all client falls. Body mechanics, it's really just being mindful of how you move while you work and maintaining proper postures to prevent injuries. Your job can be demanding. Your job can be strenuous, but there's no need to experience pain or discomfort. There's a safe way to do everything, as well as assistive devices to make your job easier and safer. If you don't know the safe way, don't take a chance. Ask questions. You've only got one body to do your job with. Take care of it and it will take care of you. Thank you.